One of our biggest risers in the latest top 247 rankings update is ready to make his college decision. Five-star defensive lineman LJ McCray will commit this weekend, and our Steve Wiltfong joins us with some final intel. Now, our job is to make you a smarter fan, and today we're doing a film breakdown of one of the top players from the D.C. area. Defensive lineman Dee Dee Holmes is in the spotlight. Plus, the best thing we do on this show is bring you live commitments, and we are doing it today. Florida State, Kansas, Kansas State, and Oklahoma fans, you could land a new linebacker. Michael Boganowski makes his pick as the college football recruiting show starts right now. Hello, hello. Blair Angulo is on scouting duty in Arizona this weekend, so you're stuck with me. I'm Emily Proud. This does not change, though. You can, as always, join the discussion in the chat by subscribing to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. We'll take some viewer questions if we get some good ones. Also, please like this video so we know that you're watching. So you go ahead, you hit the like button. I'm going to hit the headlines because we have an SEC flip. Yesterday, the number one player in Tennessee flipping his commitment from LSU to Georgia. Top 247 corner Andre Evans marks commit number 27 for Kirby Smart and his staff in the 2024 cycle. The Nashville product has been locked into the Tigers since June, but told 247 Sports that he likes the fact that the head coach is a defensive guy and that, quote, I will be developed and pushed. Meanwhile, right now on 247sports.com, you can find our midseason true freshman All American team for 2023. Remember all the guys that we told you about last cycle? Well, you can read up on how they're faring at the next level. Now, the pick for quarterback, I'll tell you this, probably a guy you did not expect. You can check it out at 247sports.com. Five-star wide receiver Ryan Wingo will join us Wednesday, October 25th to make his college commitment live right here on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. I'm officially calling it Wingo Wednesday. You can tune in at 5 Eastern to see the top five prospect pick between Georgia, Miami, Mizzou, Texas, Texas A&M, and Tennessee. Let's get some more intel on which of those he might choose. And we welcome in our director of recruiting, Steve Wiltfong, for the Wilt Fong whip around, so uh, Ryan Wingo closing in on that commitment date. I know at one point you were leading Texas, then Mizzou. So how are you feeling as of right now? And then Texas again, <laughs> and then Mizzou again. And that's where I stand right now going into this announcement. Ryan Wingo also expected back at Mizzou this weekend as they host South Carolina. They were at the LSU game talking to Ryan and his family. They said that was just a fantastic atmosphere for the LSU game. But what they've seen from Missouri this year, you know, a top 20 team, one of the most explosive offenses in the country, Luther Burden leading the nation in receiving yards. The receivers coach and his track record of development, not only with the guys on the roster, Luther Burden, Theo Weiss, um, Mookie Cooper, but also, you know, his track record with AJ Brown, DK Metcalf and guys like that. I think it shows Ryan that he can achieve what he's aiming to do, which is ultimately play at the highest level at Mizzou. Now, Texas has had momentum at various points. Miami and Tennessee, those have been exciting relationships and exciting opportunities for Ryan Wingo. But I like where Mizzou stands to keep another in-state five-star home as they already have the number four player in the country, Williams Winery committed. Perhaps those guys enroll early together, roommate together. I've heard some of that as well out there, but really like where Coach Drinkwitz and company are at with a week to go in this recruitment going into another visit at Mizzou. Super excited to bring you that commitment live. It's crazy to think he's choosing between maybe some SEC schools because Texas joining the league next year. Uh, let's talk about another five-star decision coming this weekend for defensive lineman LJ McCray. What can you tell us about his impending choice coming up Saturday? Well, made about eight or nine phone calls on LJ McCray today, have more on the 24-7 Sports website. But some of the things that people were saying about LJ McCray, family handling this thing like pros, they keep it close to the vest. They've done a masterful job of being silent through all of this. Um, trying to add up all the intel, all the buzz, all the chatter 
you know, I, you know, coming into the week, I, I feel like things have really picked up around Florida State. That's a program that seems to have some momentum as they put the finishing touches on what could be a really special recruiting class. They're already having a special season. He took his last visit of the process to Florida State two weekends ago, or at least his last visit before he makes a college decision. Uh, and, and and Florida State's been on him as long as anybody. Coach Hagens and his track record of defensive line development, uh, Coach Norvell, trajectory of the program, all exciting things. And a lot of people think that Florida State's at the top or near the top here down the stretch. A program that's always been at the top uh, or near the top is the Florida Gators. He's been camping with Florida, going back to middle school. Really loves this recruiting class that Florida's putting together. It's number three nationally right now in the 24-7 sports player rankings. Coach Napier, Coach Chaos, that coaching staff has really made an impression, and he feels very comfortable in Gainesville. Those are the two programs that I'm hearing the most buzz about going into Saturday's decision. Georgia was a school that I was hearing a lot about coming into the season. They were the one school that he didn't visit this fall, at least on their campus and watch play. He did see them play against Auburn, but I think Georgia's kind of dialing back in this one. We'll see what happens this weekend. Miami's a program that's just kind of, you know, they're in there, right? Uh, uh, he's from South Florida, or he's got a lot of family in South Florida. Uh, the opportunity to be coached by Jason Taylor is exciting to him. Also likes the program trajectory, still in contact with Miami. While I'm hearing more about Florida State and Florida's position, I'm not sleeping on Miami or ruling them out. We've seen them rally and land guys like Zaquan Patterson late. Marquise Lightfoot was in Ohio State, lean for a lot of his process. He's committed to Miami. So we'll see what happens uh, down the stretch here for LJ McCray. And then communication still remains with Auburn as well. Coach Jeremy Garrett and company uh, have a great relationship. He loves what he's seen from that first year staff. He was there for the, the, the great game against Georgia. He's the freshman on the field playing. Same thing with Miami. Uh, but summing all that up, Emily, Florida State, Florida, uh, when, you, when you're adding up the eight, nine people you talked to today, people feel they're in the best position, but you still got Miami and Auburn in there as well. Can't rule anybody out. Four uncommitted five stars at this point, but uh, this time next week, that will be cut in half. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this opportunity to remind you to hit that like button if you have not already. Steve is showing you what it looks like. I think there's a heart button you can hit, but we want the one that looks like the thumbs up. Go ahead and this smash. This Taylor Swift does? Is that her thing? Yes, yeah, Steve. The yeah. heart button? Yeah, but we don't, don't, don't hit the one that looks like a heart. Hit the one that looks like a thumbs up. That's the one that we like. Um, but we'll, we'll appreciate the hearts, too. I can't believe we already got a Taylor Swift reference on this show. I'm going to try to steer us back on track because finally this week we have a game of consequence in the Big Ten. Ohio State hosting Penn State, and I am... Certain that that is not all they're hosting, Steve. Uh, who are some of the big name visitors traveling to the shoe this weekend? Well, let's start in the 2024 class. Ohio State has the number two class in America, and that's headlined by our number one player in America, Jeremiah Smith, top ranked receiver, top ranked player. Coming back to Columbus, he was there for Ohio State's home opener this year. It's well documented. Florida, Florida State, Miami trying to flip him. I think that's going to be a hard uphill battle for those programs, but obviously Ohio State getting them back is big. They're also bringing in top 247 defensive alignment of Maris Williams, who they are trying to flip from Florida. And I think that if you're Florida, you're a little nervous about this visit. Larry Johnson and company recently offered. They're getting up the campus for an official visit. This is a new opportunity for Ameris to consider that he didn't have the first time around when he made his college decision to play at Florida in June. Now, Florida, they're doing all the right things. Recently, we're at his school, trying to get him back for another home game after this. Again, he loves Coach Napier. Loves Coach uh, uh, Bateman, Coach Peterson, and, and, and that and that coaching staff there. But Ohio State's an exciting opportunity. Larry Johnson's track record. It's going to be a great atmosphere, great environment. Uh, we'll see what kind of move Ohio State makes this weekend. But I think that the interest is real uh, in, in Ohio State, and we'll see what kind of weekend he has. And then in 2025, so many blue chippers. We could do an entire show on just the visit list. So we'll just highlight a few. Ohio State, they got the number 10 class in the country right now, headlined by quarterback Pavian St. Clair. He'll be back. Uh, they could have sign a special DB class next cycle. They have the nation's number two corner, Devin Sanchez. The nation's number three corner, Dorian Brew. The nation's number four corner, Trey McNutt. And the number one player in Indiana, 
uh, cornerback Mark Zachary the fourth, all expected in Ohio State at the top or near the top for each one of those prospects. Mark Zachary was just at Michigan earlier this week on his fall break. Wolverine's impressed. He likes Notre Dame and Cincinnati. But every time I see Mark Zachary play wearing Ohio State gloves, I think that Ohio State's in a really good spot for Trey McNutt. Devin Sanchez is a battle with Alabama, LSU, and A&M, but he's been to Ohio State a couple times. Loves Coach Walton, Coach Eliano and company. And then Dorian Brew is just going to be a slobber knocker on the trail. Two more names. Top 247 offensive tackle, Carter Lowe. That's trending the right way for Ohio State right now. He's out of Toledo Whitmer. And then Marquise Davis is a top 247 running back from Cleveland Heights. He was at Penn State earlier this year. He's high on both these programs. Hard to beat Ohio State for a running back in the state. Coach Tony Alford does a fabulous job, but he likes both these programs. So big opportunity for each of these teams in the Marquise Davis sweepstakes on Saturday. Let's head a little further down south where four-star athlete Cameron Michael out of Georgia looks to be trending toward a future commitment to Georgia. Now you and Kip Adams from Dogs 24-7, they, you both have crystal balls in for the in-state prospect to commit to the Dogs. They've been in there for a while now, but what is the latest with his recruitment? Yeah, my crystal ball, I don't love it, Ooh. Emily. Uh, now, Georgia, they're going to bring him back the first weekend of November camp. Michael told me that he'll be on campus uh, back in Athens for that. Uh, I did like Georgia. I think that crystal ball is old, and they're certainly one of his top contenders. But I like Tennessee right now for Cam Michael. So it was back on campus earlier this season. They were one of the first programs to pitch offense to him. That's an authentic, authentic genuine thing. For one, the dynamic player who was a major riser in the recent 24-7 sports player rankings update. A uh, great relationship with the staff. Loves Tennessee's offense. Loves the way that Tennessee's recruited the quarterback position. Uh, Mike Matthews, a uh, similar skill set type player from the state of Georgia, already in the fold for Tennessee. I think there's a lot of things to like about Tennessee. Now it's like... Does this upcoming visit to Georgia make me reignite and like that pick as much as I did? Because I like Tennessee right now. Colorado's in there. They have his cousin, Amantre Bradford, committed. He had a really good return visit to Colorado this fall after visiting back in the spring. A&M, Kentucky, South Carolina, a couple others he likes. Uh, but Tennessee, the most right now for Cam Michael. And I'm thinking about changing that pick to the balls. Ooh, okay, so what you're telling me is it ain't over yet. I definitely need to continue to track this one. Cam Michael is not He's locked gonna it up. He's going to come in on Thanksgiving, too. Okay. Uh, we need to add that turkey day commitment for Cam Michael. Okay, so we will get a decision soon enough next month. Good to know. Okay, it looks to uh, have been a pretty successful week for Notre Dame after taking down a then top 10 USC at home. You now have three crystal balls in favor of the Irish for some guys in the class of 2025. Who do you have trending toward Notre Dame right now? Well, uh, my colleague Tom Loy and I, we have Cree Thomas, a defensive back out of Phoenix, Arizona, Brophy College Prep. We crystal balled him to the Irish Sunday morning after his return visit to Notre Dame. We were hearing a lot of positive buzz for the Irish regarding Cree Thomas coming into the visit. He told me the environment was wild. It was really amazing to see how passionate the fans are about the Irish. He stormed the field after the big win. He said that was super fun and, and, and definitely a highlight. And, uh, the thing that continues to excite him about Notre Dame is just the energy of the whole program, passion for the game. He loves Coach Freeman, loves the staff. I think Notre Dame has set the bar in that recruitment, and that's why I've crystal balled, we crystal balled the Irish recruit Thomas. I also joined uh, Tommy Loy in crystal balling Notre Dame for top 247 tight end James Flanagan out of a, a school that has the name Notre Dame, Della Bay Academy up there in Green Bay. Uh, he visited Notre Dame in March, returned for spring practice in April, and then was at this game. And, and the returns are always super high from James Flanagan regarding the Irish. I think he's closing in on, on maybe making a decision. Love where Notre Dame stands for James Flanagan as they battle Michigan, among others. And then for my neck of the woods, the Indianapolis area, I crystal balled Notre Dame for defensive lineman Damian Shanklin out of Warren Central. Notre Dame's had success at Warren Central before they landed Sheldon Day, who had a great career at Notre Dame before playing in the NFL and, and and Damian told me that when Notre Dame offered back in August they moved to the top of his list this was his first visit there he said everything stood out had a great time with the recruits the coaches loved the game uh, really has clicked with coach Al Washington 
uh, Coach Nick Sebastian, and, and uh, he believes that they see a lot in him, which makes him see even more in them. And then, he lo- hey, if they sacked Caleb Williams six times they, or, or eight times, they picked him off three times. He said it was a wonderful night. Could ultimately end up being a wonderful class for Notre Dame, and I think they'll they'll land these three guys in 2025. And then 2024 tight end Carter Nelson, top 247 player, uh, uh, arguably the top tight end in the country, number two in our standings. He's committed to Nebraska. Now I think it's still a little bit of an uphill battle for Notre Dame in, in flipping him from the in-state Huskers, uh, but they got him back to campus. He's very comfortable with Notre Dame's recruit CJ Carr top 10 class he's gotten a chance to click with those guys over a couple visits you know coach Gerard Parker coach Marcus Freeman he likes those guys uh, there's something about Notre Dame for him and that family that they love uh, with that being said the family has a lot of love for Nebraska loves what Matt Rule and company are doing there and and so I still need to see more before I say he's going to be in Notre Dame's class but I do think Notre Dame has the brain or the the wheels churning uh, for Carter Nelson and his family after they were able to come in and see a story of rivalry, which was one of the boxes they wanted to check with their process, see one of the best storied rivalries in college football. His dad said everyone should go see Notre Dame USC. They were able to do that. Notre Dame continuing to try and chip away at Carter Nelson. But I think if you're asking me right now, I think he'll still stick. But we always reserve the right to change our <laughs> minds. And so does the young man, too. I mean, he, he's looking around. I know Nebraska fans are probably a little bit nervous, but Steve Wolfong says right now it's all right. Okay, since we didn't get to talk to you on Monday, we still have more visit recaps to discuss. I got to ask about LSU because we promoted the fact that they hosted the number one quarterback in the 2025 class, Bryce Underwood. So tell us, how did the weekend go? Yeah, you, you had Brandon Huffman on to talk Washington. You had uh, Don Callahan on to talk North Carolina, those big recruiting weekends. We just talked to Irish, but LSU, they had a big recruiting weekend, uh, which was highlighted by the number one quarterback in the country, 2025 passer Bryce Underwood out of Belleville, Michigan, who's now been to Death Valley three times, had a great visit early in the year, returned uh, this summer and had another fantastic experience, both multi day visits and this time they got a chance to soak in a, a night in, in Death Valley and his dad Daquan told me man what what an experience uh, not only LSU but Baton Rouge is, is an amazing place to be me and my family love the atmosphere now they really clicked with Joe Sloan quarterbacks coach Brian Kelly head coach and, and, and Jake Wan talked about them having an opportunity to observe the coaches in their element. And then also, I feel like a lot of recruits, when they talk about LSU, they always bring up the food and, and they got to eat some of that Asian food down there. So look, I think LSU is still in great position. If they're not at the top, they're definitely near the top, tied at the top, uh, Michigan, Colorado, Alabama, Oregon, some of the others, but there's no question they love LSU. And LSU is trying to put together a special 2025 class. They already have, uh, one of the nation's top receivers, five-star Decorian Moore committed, trying to get Bryce Underwood. And then I think that they're the team to beat for Harlem Berry. have had a long time push the ball for the 2025 running back from Penn State on LSU. He was back on campus, ha- had a great visit there. And then in 2024, look, they, you, you let off the show, they, they lost Amari Evans, uh, who flipped to Georgia, but they're trying for some flips themselves. And that starts with Terry Bussey, the number one ranked athlete in the country, committed to Texas A&M. He said the people and environment keep attracting him to LSU. He has a strong relationship with coaches, and that's bringing him back to campus. So LSU not going away on Bussy, who recently committed to the Aggies. Draymond Miller is a top 247 receiver who was committed to A&M when he visited LSU this past weekend. He is no longer committed to A&M. LSU is certainly near the top of his list. He had another fantastic experience there. He loved the crowd, loved the energy, and and loved the, the performance. Jaden Daniels, 418 yards of total offense, three passing touchdowns. That spoke to Bryce Underwood, but also spoke to the receivers on country Mm -hmm. uh, on campus like Draylon Miller. And then LSU also trying to flip uh, Gabriel Relaford out of Shreveport, Evangel Christian committed to the Aggies as well. And and they were ultimately able to land edge rusher C.J. Jackson out of Tucker High, one-time Georgia Tech commit, now rocking with LSU. So that was a rocking night at LSU. (laughs) They are, it's already starting to pay dividends. And I think this visit weekend will continue to pay dividends Mm -hmm. for Coach Kelly and company down the road.
You've got Death Valley at night. They won a national championship not too long ago. Big program. I think their locker rooms look like mini spaceships. Um, but the food, Steve, the food is really <laughs> what uh, what wins over some of these recruits. Let's uh, let's talk about the newly minted five-star offensive tackle Jordan Seaton. He has uh, locked in another official visit, spending the weekend in Eugene, Oregon. So where do the Ducks stand in this recruitment? Well, they're trying to move up the ladder, but they're definitely in the game. This is a visit that he's had on his radar for a while. He visited during the summer, said Dan Lanning is as real as it gets. Alabama's still the leader, in my opinion, based on conversations with Seton. Florida and, and Tennessee recent visits to them have made them very much contenders. Ohio State will be there for the Michigan State game. Colorado's in there. Miami's in there. Oregon trying to make a move this weekend. He loves Coach Dan Lanning. Okay, before we let you go. It sounds like you're ready to put in a crystal ball projection for one of the top players in 2025. Who you got and what's the school? Yeah, I like Alabama for a top 247 edge. Zion Grady from in-state making another visit to campus this weekend. He loves the track record of Alabama developing players of this position, that stand-up edge rush linebacker. And I think coming into this visit, they are the one to watch. And I think he's starting to get closer to making a decision. Now you have Georgia in there still. You have Florida State in there as well. And and then he also talked about maybe taking a visit to LSU before deciding that I think Alabama is the pulse for Zion going into his visit this weekend for the Cigar Bowl. And he's not the only blue chipper that's going to be on campus. You have top 247 running back Daniel Hill, who was at Tennessee a few weekends ago. South Carolina's in there too. Uh, but Alabama's got a lot of momentum with Daniel Hill. He's, this is a return game for him. There's no question his parents would like to see him at uh, Alabama. Uh, but Tennessee is a program. They'd love to pair him with running back Peyton Lewis. If they can land Peyton Lewis and Daniel Hill, that gives them uh, arguably the best running back class in the, in the country. And so the Cigar Bowl may be uh, uh, an opportunity for Tennessee on the road to make an impression on, on Daniel Hill, but the family loves Alabama, loves the running back track record, loves Nick Saban, loves everything they're about. And then George McIntyre, he's not expected at the Cigar Bowl. He was at the Cigar Bowl last year, and uh, there's a picture of him that I posted from that game of him and Peyton Manning in the locker room with a cigar. Uh, and, and George McIntyre was at Tennessee this past weekend. Uh, couldn't have gone better. I think the Vols, Alabama, LSU are some of the schools I'm looking at closest for him. He's going to be at UCLA for the Colorado game. Uh, but this Alabama-Tennessee game uh, could be big on the recruiting trail for a number of prospects as Tennessee tries to light it up for a second straight year and Alabama tries to regain their dominance over their longtime rival here. That's what makes the third Saturday in October so fun. Steve, I lied to you because the people have some viewer questions for you, so I'm going to throw this one out at you. Uh, Marshall would like to know, do you have any uh, latest intel on Booker Pickett? I think he's supposed to commit tonight, right? Yeah, he is committing in one hour and 34 minutes as I talk to you right now, and I love where Miami stands for the legacy recruit. His father played at Miami. His mother went to school in Coral Gables. He was at the win over Texas A&M. They had a fantastic time. And Jason Taylor, Mario and Crystal Ball company have done a great job recruiting this electric pass rusher who's had over 60 sacks coming into his senior season. A guy that can rush the pass or could play linebacker. If he commits to Miami, which we are projecting, Miami would move up three spots to number 10 in the 24-7 sports recruiting rankings as they wait on LJ McCray this weekend to try and keep moving up. Defensive line, pass rusher, the big need, the big point of emphasis for Miami this cycle. They already got some really talented ones in the boat. They'd like to add Booker Pickett, and then they'd certainly like to add LJ McCray moving forward. Certainly, Miami trying to top the seventh-ranked recruiting class they finished with last season, continuing on that trajectory. Steve? Thanks for being here today. You're the best. You can check out more of his work online at 247sports.com. And as always, you can catch past Wilt Von Whiparounds you might have missed on the 247 Sports YouTube page. Well, he is one of the top players out of the Washington, D.C. area. Defensive lineman Didi Holmes has been committed to Florida State since July. He's the number three player out of D.C., 77th in the country at his position. Our National College football analyst, Smoke Dixon, gives you an in-depth film breakdown of the D-lineman. Let's get in a little film study of Daniel D.D. Holmes. Now, on this first play, what separates Daniel is he's a 6'6", 
defensive end with the ability to get out the block and beat most offensive linemen out of it with the ability to bend, burst, and close on the quarterback. Now, the first thing you're going to see is his get off. He's already beaten that tackle out of his block. First guy out. Now, you're going to see him generate power with his left hand, knock him off of balance. Now, he has his hip cornered with him. The next thing that you want to see is he's going to take that right foot, put it in the ground without taking any extra step with the ability to burst and close. Next play that separates Didi is lateral quickness. The ability to get from one gap into the other, disappear, come to balance, and now close with speed. As you go right foot, left foot in the ground, splits the tackle and the guard, disappears for a second for a 6'6 six, six guy, come to balance. Now he gets into his cheetah cat stance, which now he's off balance. But a good athlete regains his balance by putting that left foot back in the ground, redirecting, and finishing with a tackle on the quarterback. The last play, one of the most beautiful things that you can see, a defensive end that comes off, dips, rips, get parallel with the ability to close. Now, beats the guy out of a block, dip, rips, and now he comes to a parallel stance where he's almost like an airplane. Then the next two steps are so explosive that you now see him close in one and a half step. Daniel Didi Holmes, Florida State, you're getting another one, just like you did my teammate Darnell Dockett 20-plus years ago. You're getting a guy that has power and leverage to play the run. You have a guy that has get off, bend, and the ability to close on the quarterback. That affects the quarterback in the pass game. And also he has a why. Because every time that you see this young man play, he never stops until he hears the echo of the whistle. Florida State and Knowles Nation, you got another one out of the DMV. Daniel D.D. Holmes, spectacular pass rusher and a run defender that can set the edge. All right, my Florida State fans out there, super happy to hear that. You can catch more of Smoke's work on our website, 247sports.com. And as always, a reminder to find your favorite team site to get that unrivaled coverage of your squad. So we like to call ourselves hashtag commit HQ, and we have another big one on the show today out of Junction City, Kansas. Michael Boganowski, the defensive lineman's junior year stat line prompted schools all across the country to send offers. Get this, 123 total tackles, four interceptions, a forced fumble, a passing touchdown, and two rushing touchdowns. Now he is locked in on four finalists today. That is the aforementioned Florida State. You've got Kansas, Kansas State, and Oklahoma. Today is officially decision day, so let's welcome in the man of the hour, our guest, Michael Boganowski. Michael, how are we doing today? All right, we are hoping to get Michael here. Michael, you got me? I see a thumbs up. It sounds like uh, it sounds like Mike. OK, it sounds like Michael has uh, has got me here. Michael, we're not going to waste any more time. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give you the floor and you're going to tell us where you are headed to college. So go ahead. Sounds like, uh, sounds like, okay. sounds like Michael has, uh, has got me here. Michael, we're not going to waste any more time. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give you the floor. And you're going to tell us where you are headed to college. So go ahead. Uh, so before I make my announcement, I just, uh, so before I make my announcement, I just like to say uh, thank you to God for blessing me with all these amazing opportunities. I'd also like to thank say thank you to both my parents for uh, all the money and time they sacrificed. I'd also like to say thank you to my two younger brothers for supporting me throughout this whole process. I'd also like to say thank you to the athletic director, the principal, the volleyball team, and the uh, Blue Jay media for making this all happen. I'd also like to say thank you to my extended family out in Trinidad, Tobago, Nebraska. And lastly, I'd like to say thank you to my coaches and my teammates for making me the person I am. With that being said, I will be attending the University of Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> 
the whole fam was ready to go with that gear. There's that breaking news. Oklahoma adding another prize prospect to its top 10 recruiting class. Linebacker Michael Boganowski picking the Sooners. We are picking our next guest to tell us a little bit more about Oklahoma's new addition. Bringing on Colin Kennedy of Sooners Illustrated. CK's got me here. CK, I got to know, how does the new Sooner, Michael Boganowski, fit into this already spectacular Venables defense? Yeah, this is a really exciting and kind of a unique get for Oklahoma, Emily. This is a, a guy, when you look at him, he's ranked as a linebacker. You'll see some tape of him as a linebacker. But Oklahoma's going to bring this guy in as a safety, and for good reason. He's versatile. He is a, the type of playmaker that completely wrecks game plans. And I think if you understand the context of a Brent Venables defense, they like those bigger, versatile bodies in the secondary, especially at the safety spot. And I think overall, for Michael Boganowski to have the chance to play the safety position in the SEC for a defensive mind like Brent Venables and to be developed by a coach like Brandon Hall, who did an outstanding job in this recruitment, it ended up being something he just couldn't turn down. I think that his visit earlier in the season really stood out. It was their first game day in Norman, and I was told that Boganowski's younger brother was asking if they could go to every game. <laughs> it looks like they're going to be a whole lot more here pretty soon. And I think, again, the big takeaway here, if you're an Oklahoma fan, Brandon Hall, Oklahoma safety's coach, there are a lot of big names on this OU staff, mm -hmm. right? From DeMarco Murray, Todd Bates, to Emmett Jones, Jay Bly, Miguel Chavis. But Brandon Hall has become one of the elite coaches on that staff, not just as an actual coach, but as a recruiter too. And for him to go out and get a guy who – I'll just be honest, it, it felt like a long time behind the scenes. He might end up at Kansas State. OU ends up winning out in the end, and they're going to let this guy go play safety in a really talented secondary. And I'm, I'm excited for little brother, too. He's going to see a lot yeah. more games there. Okay, I'm checking our, our chat right now. I guess I'll just go ahead and ask again to hit that like button if you have not already. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of boomers sooner. They are watching, and they are so excited. And I hate to get greedy, but while they're here, they want to know, I mean, who's next? Who are maybe some other targets that OU is uh, aiming for this cycle? It's always on to the next, right? Especially <laughs> with Oklahoma and the way that they're recruiting right now, I wouldn't expect anything less, right? But that's another thing too, Emily, is they are now above that 25 benchmark, which used to be pretty notable. Now there isn't a cap, but you're entering with Boganowski's commitment, pushing yourself to 26 pledges. You're kind of in that scholarship maneuver territory where you have to be somewhat picky about who you're going to take with the remainder of the way. And I think moving forward, first and foremost, it starts with Grant Bricks, right? The offensive tackle out of the state of Iowa. It feels like I talk about this guy, again, every single time I'm on the show. I hope just for the sake of the, the, the trajectory of this recruitment, that stops being the case. And again, it's not a reflection on the player. It's just how crazy this recruitment has been. I mean, Oklahoma, as recently as last week, I was told by sources, they were still fighting with Nebraska heavily. But what I can say that's been a little bit different than the times I've come on here and talked about him, there is a belief that OU has really picked up some momentum over the past week and that we could see a decision from Bricks over the next week or two, maybe even earlier. That being said, I feel like it's really important to know Nebraska has heard all the noise I expect the Huskers to try and counterpunch, but if a decision is actually made over the next week or two, you got to think it's advantage OU. Going from tackle to guard, Eddie Pierre-Louis. I mean, this is a guy out in the state of Florida that Oklahoma really likes as an interior offensive line take. It's kind of a unique one because he could go to the University of Oklahoma from the state of Florida. He could have all the benefits of being at OU as an offensive lineman, the, the coaching from Bill Beanville the track record of development, the offensive structure, so on and so forth. But on top of that, because of OU's move to the SEC, he would get all the perks of being an offensive lineman at OU while being able to play games in familiar territory as a Southeast guy. So I, I think Oklahoma, this is another one that they feel like they've picked up a lot of momentum with. And, and Steve Wolfong has mentioned Oregon has tried to get this guy on campus. UCF continues to be a factor. And then Gabby Arudia inside the U feels like we're on a phone call every other week, and, and this is one that Miami, too, is monitoring from a distance. But I think, again, if a decision from Eddie Pierre of the week comes over the next week or two, I think it's advantage Oklahoma again. And then to round it out, because it is relevant with Michael Boganowski announcing with us here on 24-7 Sports, 
I got to go with Reggie Powers and Cameron Campbell, two defensive backs that OU was targeting and will likely have on campus this weekend. Let me start with Reggie Powers. I, I think this is someone who, I, again, a lot of Oklahoma fans will say, but we just got Michael Boganowski. He's a safety too. What does this mean for Reggie Powers? And I'm here to tell you, I don't think it changes much at all, especially since communication has picked up with Reggie Powers and Oklahoma staff. Like, there's a lot of mutual interest here, and I think that OU believes he can play Cheetah for them. He can provide that nickel backer type of versatility that they love. And again, they want guys who can slide all over, and they think he could play up there at the high safety, too, and like some cover three base looks. And so Reggie Powers, to me, is continuing to be a name to know at that safety position, even with Voganowski now being committed. And then Cameron Campbell, cornerback. Look, they have a lot of safety takes and corner takes already. The defensive back class for OU in 2024 is already pretty lengthy, especially with Voganowski in the boat. But this is, again, a, a guy who you have to expect, especially with a potential visit coming this weekend for the UCF game, more and more interest being shared between OU and Cam Campbell. They want those, those playmaking cornerbacks. They want more depth and playmaking ability in the secondary, and they've already delivered to this point. So who knows, maybe Ken Campbell is the next one in that long line. I love it. Friend, as always, you are all over it, and thank you for uh, being a part of the show today to give us an update. If you want to see more of Colin's work, check it out at SoonersIllustrated.com. The whole team is tracking everything that is regarding the Oklahoma Sooners. Okay, one more reminder to tune in to the 24-7 Sports YouTube page next Wednesday to find out where five-star Ryan Wingo will play his college ball. All my Georgia, Miami, Mizzou, Texas, Texas A&M, and Tennessee fans, make sure you are locked in at 5 Eastern on the 24-7 Sports YouTube page. One last big congratulations to our man, Michael Boganowski, for committing to the Oklahoma Sooners today. I know everybody in Junction City, Kansas, is very happy to see you play at the next level. Thank you for joining us. Go ahead and hit that like button on the way out and subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. I'm Emily Proud, and this is the College Football Recruiting Show.